Welcome to Perfection's Clutch Installation Lab. We just finished putting a clutch in this Hyundai Elantra. Now we're going to replace the master cylinder and the slave cylinder. And we're going to bleed this system using a pushback bleeding technique. We're not going to push fluid out the bottom of the slave cylinder. We're going to push air bubbles out the top. Now I went ahead and put one bolt back in to secure the slave cylinder while I remove the bolt that holds the line on. So I'm going to use that to just secure it and start to remove that bolt. Now to remove the master cylinder, a couple different things I have to do. Inside there's merely a pin and a clip. So I pull the clip, pull the pin, that's easy. But now here on the outside, I've already disconnected the bolts that hold the reservoir in place. So I can get those out to the side. I made a couple cable disconnects here, so just to get the cable out of the way a little bit. But I've got two fairly interesting setups. To remove the line from the master cylinder, I'm using what's called a crow's foot. But on the bottom, the master cylinder is mounted to the firewall with two nuts, and it's pretty deep back in there, so I've got a long extension, a swivel, and a socket. Okay, this is the crow's foot on the line going down, and that came off quite nice. Well, now we'll go ahead and start to install the new master cylinder. So mechanically, all we do is push it through the hole in the firewall. There's two studs. Get it lined up. Now hopefully the nuts won't fall out of the socket, so... There's the first one. Do a little tighten the ratchet. I want to attach the line. Okay, that started. Now before I tighten that up, I want to go ahead and attach the line that goes to the slave cylinder itself and snug it up. Okay, now I'm going to change the wrench, use the crow's foot again, and tighten the line going into the master cylinder. Boy, that crow's foot is uh, working out well today. Now maybe this will help uh, people understand about changing brake fluid every so often. This is just full of black sludge in the bottom there. I don't think this fluid's ever been changed out. So before I install this reservoir in line, I'm gonna clean these two out. A lot cleaner in there now. That was 10 year old grunge. So I'm gonna remove the cap. Kinda hard to see, but we're getting that clamp down in place. There it is. Got it. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and attach the line to the slave cylinder. There's two copper compression gaskets. Put one in each side of your bolt. And then there's a slot in the back of the slave cylinder that the stem actually goes through. And before I get real tight with this, I'm just gonna put a drop of dot three on there. Just to act as a little bit of lubricant. Now for the fun part, bleeding it. I'm personally not a big fan of putting brake fluid in and pumping on the pedal and saying open the bleed screw. Yes, that has its place, but in a clutch we've got a couple of different situations we can work with. First, in this particular situation, I'm going to just allow it to gravity bleed. So I've got a tube on the slave center going down to the basin. And the slave cylinder is an angle where the bleed screw, I'm going to try and hold it, where the bleed screw will be just about at the highest point of my system. It's a little bit challenging with this line, but that's going to be my first effort, is just a gravity bleed. Then after we get as much fluid in as possible, then I'm going to push back on the slave cylinder just with my hand and try and push air bubbles out and up the top. So let's put some dot three in there and see what happens. Always clean dot three from the sealed container. Never, never use waste fluid. Don't recycle it like that. And I've already loosened the bleed screw, so it shouldn't take much. And hopefully we'll get some fluid coming out.
and the fluid level is dropping in the reservoir. That's good. Fluid going in. We're just going to let that run for a minute. Keep a wet towel handy. Now we've already got fluid coming out down here. Looks pretty clean. I did blow the lines out with compressed air, the rubber and the steel line. That's looking good already. Oh, there's some air bubbles. See them? I don't know if you could see them in the camera, but there's air bubbles coming out of the line right now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the bleed screw. I'm trying to give you an overview so the camera angle may not catch every single detail here. I want you to see all the parts as we're working with them. All right. I'm going to snug that up a little bit. And check the reservoir. Now the slave cylinder is extended all by itself because there's a spring inside. So now I'm going to carefully start to compress the slave cylinder just by hand and watch the reservoir. Had one bubble come out so far. There's some bubbles. Well, you can see some air bubbles still coming out. It's looking pretty good. Now it only took a few minutes of compressing the slave cylinder to act as a pump and push air bubbles up and out the top of the reservoir through the master cylinder. But uh, how do you know when it's completely bled and you've got all the air out before you hook it all up? Let me use the old slave cylinder and I'll show you one way, one technique. I've got a C-clamp here. Now inside here I put a socket, a small socket, to go between the C-clamp shoe and the piston of the old slave cylinder. At the opposite end, the C-clamp is pushing against the nut right there. So this creates that brick wall effect and you cannot extend that slave cylinder at all. So when you get a hard pedal when it's blocked like that, no air. If it had air, you'd feel it. Now the other thing that's critical is the setup of the push rod length. Right now, notice I can compress the slave cylinder with my hands quite easily. Compressing it and the spring inside the slave pushes it back. That's good. Steve, would you extend the push rod length, please? Now Steve has extended the push rod. Now I can't compress it. Steve has made it too long inside there and either the check valve is positioned or the piston port is positioned so that fluid cannot go back into the master cylinder. This is incorrect. This would have the effect of holding your foot on the pedal as the system starts to age. Steve, would you shorten the length of the push rod? Now Steve shortened it and I can compress it again. So if you don't happen to have the factory setup measurements, remember this, you must be able to compress the slave cylinder freely. That's an indicator that everything is set up correctly in the master cylinder. We bled this by gravity bleeding and by pushing the slave cylinder in against it and forcing the air bubbles up and out. We've tested it to make sure it was bled. We've checked to make sure that it has the ability to be compressed and push the fluid back into the master cylinder. I think we're all done. If you have any questions about a clutch, a hydraulic system, or a flywheel, please call Perfection at 800-258-8312. Press 4. Your call will be routed to Tony, Steve, Bobby, or myself. We'll be glad to help you out.